where to begin with this particular little item I have here from the LA Times. I have the LA Times version. It, of course, was all over the place uh, at the end of last week. You know, the uh, remember the Hobby Lobby, the uh, company based in Oklahoma, private, of course, uh, that won a landmark Supreme Court case by telling the Supreme Court justices pleading, just pleading, that their company was run according to rigorously moral Christian principles. Oh, dear Lord, please don't make us be forced to buy insurance for our employees that might have contraceptives. We are so moral. We are so Christian. It says in the Bible, thou shalt not fornicate with a rubber on, doesn't it? Somewhere. Well, this hypocritical bunch of shitheads has been caught importing millions of dollars worth of smuggled Iraqi antiquities. They don't give a shit. Oh, oh, were they smuggled? Oh, darn. You know, look, uh, in the 18th and 19th centuries, and even in the 20th century, European countries, mostly European, white people, who made their excursions into, oh, darkest Africa, or the jungles of South America, or the Middle East, wherever they went, if they found antiquities that belonged to the country in which they were found, they had no problem just taking them. We found them. That's where the expression finders, keepers, losers, weepers originated. So the uh, white colonialists would, would just pick up everything that wasn't nailed down that they thought had value, and certainly those items that were related to the dim and murky past. The French, the British, the Dutch, the Spanish, um, and some Americans too, just didn't seem to care. I mean, what would the local wogs have to do with something that's 3,000 years old? They don't need it. These sons of bitches don't even speak English. We'll take it. And a lot of that occurred. And over the years, but certainly beginning in the 60s and 70s, the countries of origin began to demand that their former imperialist masters return the items, the antiquity items that they had stolen. Now, why did they wait so long? Well, it, it was after World War II considerably that the countries that used to be run by the European colonialists finally put together governments, uh, most of which were pale imitations of what they thought governance should be, but they were governments nonetheless. And how they governed themselves really was none of our business if they wanted to periodically commit mass slaughter. Well, okay. But one thing these governments did start demanding these various nations who had been looted is that the white people returned the items taken. So there was an awful lot of press about it, a lot of publicity, and certain countries were shamed into returning these items from antiquity that were then at the time, were ensconced in their various uh, museums and libraries and so on and so forth. Because, you know, only white people care about deep history. The wogs couldn't possibly care about deep history in their own countries, could they? So a lot of items were returned, and the a publicity generated by the stories about how these items had been stolen the countries had been sacked. 
Not only had they been exploited for their natural resources and their cheap labor, but those items that came from millennia ago also were taken. Who cared? But the issue got a lot of press, a lot of publicity, like I mentioned, and eventually it became kind of understood that you don't go to somebody else's country. Even if you were the imperial overlords at the time, the colonial power, but it's certainly not now. Jesus, bleeding Christ, not now. And steal that which is not yours. Especially you don't do that if you're a rigorously moral Christian organization like Hobby Lobby. Now, if anybody would understand rigorously moral Christian principles, you would think it would be Hobby Lobby, right? They made such a goddamn stink about being forced by the government to provide health insurance for their employees. And under the Affordable Care Act, that health insurance would include contraception. Oh, no. We have our rigorous moral Christian principles, and they will not be breached. You know, I'm so sick of this shit I could scream. I don't think there is a real Christian left. Now, by, by real Christian, I mean somebody who does what their Lord and Savior told them to do. Get rid of all your shit. Throw it away. Get rid of it. Sell it. Give it. Get rid of it. Sell your big villa or give it to somebody that needs it. Get rid of all your luxurious clothing. Get rid of your Maserati or the equivalent thereof 2,000 years ago. Dump it and come and follow me. If you really believe in what I'm saying, come and follow me. And example after example, endless examples in the Christian half of the Bible attributed directly to their Messiah. Easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the gates of heaven. Um, As ye do to these, the least of my brethren, you do to me. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are the meek. I mean, just on and on and on. And it's my understanding the Christian Messiah only gave three sermons in his entire year of ministering before he was executed. Three sermons. Maybe it was four, but I think it was three. Possibly the reason for the Christian Messiah's succinctness in only giving three sermons was because everything that needed to be said could be said very simply, precisely, and concisely in those three sermons. Don't fuck over your neighbor. Don't steal or lie. For heaven's sake, be a good person. Somebody smites you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Don't be a warmonger. Don't be an asshole. Well, that's almost a joke today. I have yet to meet or hear of or listen to a prominent self-identified Christian, whether it's this asshole Mike Pence or Falwell before he disappeared or I don't care who it is. The prominent Christians who are out there preaching lies and deception. I I, I don't mean about the religion. You know, the religion is 2,000 years old. Okay, fine. I'm talking about the way they claim to be following their own Messiah. I mean, the word hypocrite doesn't come close to describing these evil, evil assholes. And Hobby Lobby. We have rigorously moral Christian principles, oh, but it doesn't apply when we want to steal shit. When we want to steal shit, all of that rigorously moral Christian principle stuff out the door. According to the U.S. Attorney in Brooklyn, New York, last Wednesday, 
The attorney's office said it had extracted, I love that word, extracted a settlement of $3 million from the company and forced it to forfeit thousands of artifacts. Thousands. I guess if you steal one thing, it's a sin. If you steal thousands, it's a statistic. Hobby Lobby said in a statement, according to LA Times, that it made the purchases of biblical material and other, art of other artifacts. I love that part. Biblical material and other artifacts. Now get this. As an expression of, quote, the company's mission and passion for the Bible. End quote. These lion fuckers, every single one of them, the company's mission and passion for the Bible? The Bible says categorically in the Jewish part, don't fucking steal. Don't do it. Don't covet your neighbor's anything, up to and including his ass. And the Christian part, of the Bible reiterates in not such harsh terms, but close enough. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These goddamn Christians today, they're the most evil tribe ever put together. A curse on all of you because you have taken a simple message from a simple Jew 2,000 years ago who figured shit out and you have twisted it into the most abhorrent, nasty-ass religious belief you could possibly come up with. You use your Christianity to scare the shit out of your, out of your children. You better believe in God. You're going to burn in hell. <laughs> Damn you people. The company's mission and passion for the Bible led them to steal. I mean, a common goddamn criminal is not going to cop that kind of a plea. Why'd you steal that? Oh, I don't know. I wanted it. Uh-huh. Why didn't you get a job, save your money, and buy it? Eh, too much effort. I just stole it. But Hobby Lobby, they did the same goddamn thing, only to a much greater degree. But they don't have the fucking decency to say, well, we took it because, you know... It was available. What? Did you have any thought that Iraqi artifacts? Iraq, a country that the United States fucking murdered 14 years ago, just murdered it, and out of the corpse gave rise to ISIS? But Hobby Lobby, oh, that's just a bunch of bullshit. We don't have anything to do with that. But we are thieves. We will steal any fucking thing that's not nailed down. But I'll tell you what. You come into my Hobby Lobby shop and you take a, a little box of beads and you walk out without paying for it, I'll have your ass prosecuted and hopefully put you in jail. But we are Christian. We have a rigorously moral Christian principles, and it apparently allows us to fucking steal.